Victoria and Ricky and we've just started renovating this tiny stone cottage on our Portuguese homestead. After weeks of deconstruction and demolition, it's finally time to start looking forwards and rebuilding. After all the demolition work last week, there's still so much debris left on top of the walls. So before we can actually start rebuilding them, we need to clean them off. Tell you what, that shower this morning was a waste of time. I'm absolutely caked. The egg one is working an absolute treat to clean up the walls really well, but there are still some quite big pieces on top of them. So I'm gonna grab the ladder and brush and go old school and try and clean those ones off before Ricky gets there and finishes the job. Yeah, that was definitely a job that realistically required a mask. Don't come at me in the comments, I know I needed a mask. We just couldn't find one this morning. Our local DIY store is shut today and I'm not gonna do a two and a half hour round trip to the city just to go and get a mask. We've got stuff to get done. So just had to crack on and push on, but yeah, that was a, a lot of dust flying around everywhere. actually got a nice clean surface to work on we can at long last start to actually rebuild the tiny house because until now it's felt like we've pretty much been deconstructing it two fig trees on our property and this one is just beside the tiny house and I've been keeping a very close eye on it to watch out for when the early fruit was going to be ready and we've probably got about 10 or 15 figs on there that are ready to eat now but we apparently have a fig thief seen as I don't know about five of them have been damaged and they've been half eaten so yeah I don't know what what that is maybe a bird maybe the mongoose again this one however looks perfect Taste test. They're good. Oh, we need a ramp. Ugh. Just trying to figure out the best place to start. So the first thing we want to do is to build back up this gable end so just this top bit because this is where the old ridge beam was and then we removed all this section to be able to roll it out the back so we're trying to figure out do we work across from left to right or do we pick where our end point is and fill in in between I think I'm gonna go for put the right one in and then work our way back to the other side would you agree it's how I've always done it <laughs> if you can't tell we're pretty new when it comes to stone masonry. How's it looking? Pretty good. Might need to notch off a tiny bit, but all gravy, baby. Thank you. 
Well, it's safe to say that this part of the project is not going smoothly. Last time we saw you, we actually had to abandon the camera quite abruptly because I was in the middle of collecting up more stones ready to put onto the gable end to complete or at least carry on with the job. And I was walking through this area that we've got so many lovely wildflowers still growing. When I felt something in my shoe, I put down the stones and it was really such a sharp pain. And when I pulled back my sock, I actually had a bee in there and it had stung the front of my foot. I started to have quite a, a strong shooting pain going through my foot and anyway I abandoned mission, went back up to the house, got some ice pack on it and took an antihistamine. Luckily the swelling did go back down quite soon. Within about an hour I could walk on the foot as usual. But me getting stung by the bee was not the only problem that we had that afternoon. Yeah for a few weeks I've had like a funny pain in my stomach and it's kind of just been like a mild discomfort I would describe it as so I've been able to work with it but that afternoon after Victoria got stung I've tried to carry on for a bit and then this pain just got worse and worse and yeah kind of over the next few days it got really bad to the point of completely lost my appetite and even when I could eat I couldn't eat without this pain just getting terrible. So yeah, the doctor prescribed me some tablets, which has helped a little bit, but it's not ideal I'm to take tablets every day. But yeah, now I'm just waiting for an ultrasound till I scan my whole abdominal area just to make sure that there's nothing we don't want in there. Hopefully it's just something minor. Hopefully you can tell by my chipper mood that I feel a lot better at the moment. So. We're trying to capitalize on it and push forward and get stuff done because it's actually been a week since that day when we left you before. I've come out and had little pockets of time to do things like shape stones to get back up on the gable end. But the weather has just been crazy hot. We're back into like the high 30s now. So you can only really work up until lunchtime at best without it being a bit dangerous so we're up early it's about half seven at the moment because it's going to get to 38 degrees by this afternoon we've got all of the stones dry fitted to rebuild the top bit of the gable end back up and the plan for today get mixing up some lime and hopefully get as much as we can mortared and on before lunchtime stones already uh, shaped and kind of dry fitted in place made that so much quicker. I've not bought the mortar all the way to the front level because I kind of want to leave that and when I repoint the rest of the wall I want to be able to do it all as a one -er. So yeah they're in to a point now I need to go over onto the back side get that done. Once that back side's then in I can then kind of start filling in and trying to get it nice and smooth on top. a shot so I don't forget how it's configured. While Rick is getting started I'm on a mission with a bucket to find some suitable little stones to go inside those awkward little gaps. So far I've found two. How's it going on this side? Not too bad, a bit awkward being up a ladder but at the moment we can't get the scaffold here so you gotta do what you gotta do. You look so little and I'm so tall. <laughs> We are not having much luck with these water bottles. This is the second one that has fallen down during this job. I think it might be fatally injured as well. I'm pretty sure that nozzle can't be reattached, so it might be third time lucky. Mm. 
Cool, so that's the first gable end done. We need to rebuild the slopes as well that we took out before, but my tiny little pea brain can't figure out how to get that right for the form. So what we're gonna do is get the top on, get the back on, then join with the form. And then I can see around the form where I need to build up around it because at the moment, it would just be guesswork or trying to use a string, but even a string, I can't get it in the right place. So yeah, nice bit of wall rebuilt here, flattened off on the top and had to knock it on the head today. It's got it's about half 12 now. It's already about, I don't know, 34 degrees, something like that. Ideally, wouldn't be doing this in this weather because this stuff is drying out so quickly. We're gonna put a wet towel over the top just to try and cool down the curing process. Tried to get some hessian the other day, which is what like the local renderers use when they're doing a building. But the shop was shut. I'm gonna go back another day and get some. For now, a wet towel will have to do. But that's us for now. We'll come back either later or tomorrow and get the other gable, the same thing, done. feels like deja vu. <laughs> Doesn't it just? Yeah, we're back again today to get this second gable end done. I'm actually feeling like fairly optimistic about today. I wasn't so optimistic going into yesterday, but I'm actually really happy with how yesterday's effort turned out. So I think this should go fairly smoothly. Got a bit of cloud cover at the moment, although the sun is trying its absolute hardest to burn through. We're gonna try and make the most of it, get going with it. But the first stone that I need to move is a massive chunky one. I'm not looking forward to that. Now I don't want to tempt fate, but this second gable is seemingly going up even better than yesterday. So as a reward and to keep our energy levels up, I'm going to get us a little sweet treat. On one of my many trips yesterday to find extra stones for the wall, I came across this little plum tree, which we actually didn't know even was on our property. It has got lots of these fruit on it, and these are European plums, and apparently they're the kind of plum that you would use to dry and then make prunes from. I don't know if the fresh variety have the same effect as dried prunes, so probably two of these will be ample for Ricky and I. Who wants plums? <laughs> Me! <laughs> Have you tried one? No, nope, you're the first one. The guinea pig. <laughs> How is it? It's alright, it's a bit squidgy. Squidgy or ripe? Squidgy. Okay. Sweet? Juicy? <laughs> Out of ten? <laughs> Why are you giving you plum? <laughs> mm, I'd give it... A five. Plenty more where that came from. I think five's fair. Nice and juicy though. Got something to show you. Okay, normal hand. Yes. Balloon hand. Oh no. Don't actually know if you can see that on camera you or can. not. You can. You've got your knuckles. Something's got inside my glove, I think, and bitten me, but my hand has really ballooned. Ricky's just gone out to go and buy materials for tomorrow morning. So it's just me and the dogs this afternoon and it is really, really hot. So I'm not feeling particularly inclined to do anything too strenuous, but both the dogs do need a wash. Our vet gave us a suggestion to give them a wash every month because it is so dusty on the land and it can cause skin irritation. So usually they're not the biggest fans of having a bath, but today I feel like they actually might enjoy the cool down. Good volunteer. Oh, that's nice. Yay, good girl puppy. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> 
You made it done. Two clean dogs. <laughs> right, so first little bit of the form done. We're not building the whole form this week because we still need the kind of mortar on the gable ends to set and go off a bit more. What we're trying to do now is just to get the flat bit along the top. So like, as you can see, this is what's gonna be on the flat bit of the gable that was rebuilding over the last few days. That's gonna be filled with concrete. The new ridge beam is gonna sit on top of this. But yeah, physically making these things, I think is really important because we're visual people. And like I said before, I just can't wrap my head around where I need to fill in on the slope to get the right angle. So the easiest thing to do is to build this for the top, build a little bit for the back wall, and then we can run a plank and I can be able to see the line. We've gone for much chunkier wood this time. The last time we did some concrete in was when we did the greenhouse base and we kind of just used thin wood that we had for that and it was bulging all around the place. This is much thicker. This is an inch thick. It's pretty sturdy stuff this. So hopefully this isn't gonna bend out when we fill it with concrete. One thing that's making me realize is just how much concrete this is gonna take. And how high we've got to get it. Yeah, that's a very good point as well. We've got to get it all up the scaffold. That's gonna be a fun job. Well, we'll save that one for next week or the week after. But for now, let's get this up. We'll get the piece on the back wall and then we can start figuring out the slopes. <laughs> Well, things aren't going quite to plan. It's definitely a good exercise doing that because it allows us to see kind of front to back the line that we need the ring beam form to take. And although we knew there was areas that we needed to fill back in to make sure that that concrete wouldn't seep out around the underside of the form, it's also shown that we still need to take more stone out on these gable ends and on the end corner, which is a bit frustrating, but it's what we need to do. It's a bit tricky the way that we're doing this ring beam because what lots of people would ordinarily do, the depth of the ring beam would be the full depth of the wall. So you would have shuttering, your form would come up on the outside of the wall, you'd pin it to the wall and you would just fill everything with concrete. And then what you normally see is concrete kind of fills out into the gaps all around the bottom. Well, we don't want to do that because we don't want this ring beam visible from the inside or the outside. So we're making ours, uh, what's the word? not as wide as the depth of the walls and that will allow us to then build up stonework either side of that ring beam and conceal it inside however it does make it a lot trickier to get this form on get it flat and get it straight so yeah one thing we discovered this morning is we've got a lot more work laying ahead of us so i think the first thing i need to do is get the hammer get the chisel start taking yet more stone out of this wall Honestly, I thought I was done with removing stones, but apparently not. <laughs> 